In this video, I'm going to tell you how you can use a landing page to promote your mobile app even before it launches. First, let me kind of go over what a landing page is and how it's different from other types of websites. So a landing page is going to be a single page website that explains what your product is and how it can help people. And then it also will have one single call to action, which could be signing up for a newsletter, signing up for a wait list, signing up for the actual product, linking to download the product, or even paying for the product. In the case where you're creating a landing page to promote a mobile app or product that hasn't launched yet, the call to action is going to be signing up for a waitlist. That's exactly what I've set up at RhodesAudio.com. This landing page is going to be kind of the case study that's used in this video. So a lot of this is kind of my experience with deploying this landing page and why I made the choices I made. Let me first go over the things that you should include on your landing page. And then later I'm going to tell you the things that you should avoid putting on your landing page. So the first thing you're going to want on your landing page is a headline. In this headline, you want to be an emotional hook to get the reader to actually want to read more about your site. So currently my landing page headline is join the audio revolution. And this headline kind of is a little bit mysterious. Maybe you don't really know what it's about, but it's giving you more of an emotional draw that might make you more interested in continuing to read the page. So that's where the subtext comes in and the subtext should kind of explain what your app is actually about. So the intent of the headline is to grab the person's attention and then the subtext is there to kind of fill in the gaps and let them know actually what they're getting into. All that being said, the headlines and subtext are not set in stone. Obviously these can change. Actually, by the time you're watching this, I may have already changed my headline and my subtext because you always wanna be adjusting those and testing them to see which headlines and subtext actually work best. The next thing that you're going to wanna include are multiple images or even videos of your product. So you can see on my site here, I have several images of the product that kind of show how it works or what it will look like. Again, since the app isn't deployed yet, these images can just be renders that you make in Figma. They don't need to actually be the real product, but you wanna give the users a good visual representation of what the app will look like. Most people aren't gonna read everything you put on the page, but they are going to see the images. So more images is better. And if you communicate through images, that is a better way than trying to communicate through words. If your product or app is already launched, the next main thing you wanna try and get on your landing page are some testimonials. And the reason for these testimonials, which I'm sure you've seen on multiple other websites, is it gives your product credibility from people that aren't you. So of course you're going to say your product is great, but if you are seeing testimonials of other people saying that your product is great, especially if they're people that are known within the niche of your product, it can dramatically help convince people that your product actually is great. Obviously, if your app isn't launched yet, you won't have testimonials, so you won't be able to add those, but once your app does launch, you should go back and add those in as soon as possible. The next thing that you definitely wanna include on your landing page are the main features of your product or app. So you can see in my landing page here, I have this section, how Rhodes is unique, and this is going to essentially just go over the main features of the app. You'll see it's mostly picture-based, like you can look at the picture and then there's just a short bit of text. The goal of the text here and these features is to kind of tell people not just what the feature is, but how the feature can benefit the user. Discuss on your time isn't actually telling you what the feature in the app is. It's not saying that you can record directly from your phone or that you don't need to respond immediately. It's just telling you that you can discuss on your time. So that's giving the user a benefit that they will get from this app indirectly almost. So it's not, it's not a direct feature of the app, but it is what the user will get by using the app. Another thing you can include is a frequently asked question section. This can be useful if your product has some unique features that are a little bit more confusing to explain. The frequently asked questions can be a better place to actually put a lot of text because if the person is having that question and they see the question headline, they can click in there and actually read a little bit more about it. So it's a good way to actually explain those more complex areas of your app that don't fit as well in the main features section. The final thing you're gonna to wanna to include on your landing page is that call to action. So you've explained your product, people might be interested now, give them something that they can do. It could be to download your app if it's already available or sign up for a wait list if it isn't yet available. But the goal here is to actually get that user to do something. And those are probably the two most common things, either to download the app or 
get on a wait list. Either way, your landing page has a goal and the goal is to get them to perform whatever action this is. And this is the goal of the landing page. Now let me give you three tips of things to avoid while you're building your landing page. And then I'll wrap up the video by telling you when you should create your landing page. So the first thing you should avoid is linking out to any other websites or even other parts of your website. So you might have a blog that goes with your landing page or you might have other content or other pages on your site, but your landing page should be strictly just the one page and not link out to any of that other content. If you have blog posts that talk more about your app, those blog posts themselves can link to the landing page, but you shouldn't link the landing page to the blog post. Because again, the landing page has the one single goal of getting people to go to your call to action and perform it. If you are linking to other websites or other parts of your site, it's going to get them off the landing page and make the odds of them coming back and performing that call to action much lower. So keep it simple and directed at getting the user to perform that call to action. That brings us to the second thing to avoid, which is semi-related, and that is to avoid having multiple different call to actions. So you can imagine you might have a newsletter and your app might already be launched. If this is the case, you might think you could have two call to actions, one for signing up for the newsletter and another for downloading the app but I would try to avoid this and just choose one thing. Ultimately, if you do have the app launched and you have a newsletter, you probably just wanna get the user to download the app. And then once they're in the app, in there, you can try and get them to join the newsletter, but keep the landing page very focused on the one thing that's most important for the user to do. And the last thing to avoid on your landing page is having too much text. If you have a paragraph that has more than three sentences, it's probably too much text. People don't want to read large blocks of text. They just want to read the headlines and see the images and get a feel for what's going on. People are just going to scroll right through those large blocks of text. So if you are trying to convey something in a large block of text, really reread it and consider what the real point you're trying to make in that text is and then cut it down to just the essentials or use a bulleted list to convey that information in a more easy to view and skim format. So now you're probably thinking, when should you build your landing page? And the answer is as soon as possible. If you have an idea for an app, even if you haven't started building it, getting a landing page built could be a very good first step. I would recommend actually kind of getting designs for the app done first. And then once you have designs, put them on a landing page, put an area where people can get on the wait list and then start sharing that idea and kind of use your landing page as like a pitch deck. So you have your app idea, it isn't built yet, but you're like, hey, here's my landing page, go check out what I'm building. And if people are interested, they can sign up for the wait list. And all that time while you are building your app, you can be collecting potential users along the way. And then when you do actually launch your app, you'll have this nice list of people that are interested and you can push them all to download your app. Hopefully you found this information useful on building a landing page. Again, a lot of this information is coming from my recent experience building my landing page for my app. In the process of building this, I did quite a bit of research on building landing pages, which is what I'm sharing here. I am planning to release a short video series over the next few weeks, going over exactly how to build the landing page that I built for Rhodes. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can Get alerted of these new videos and follow along to build your own landing page. All right, ciao for now.